So I knew that death was knocking on the door, but I knew that that, that question was already settled because the Lord Jesus Christ <clears throat> had come banging on my consciousness years before. And uh, even though I said, no, I don't need a crutch like that, he wasn't going to let me get away with the words like that. And he took hold of my heart and he took hold of my mind. And I realized Jesus Christ has the truth. He is the truth, the way, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by, by him. I okay, Lord, you got me. Whatever you want. And I understood that if I'm going to come to Jesus for salvation, that means he's going to, he is going to save me out of this world. I am now living for him. I'm not living for myself, which is what I was doing right up until then. There's a really neat verse in, in Jeremiah. you got to look it up. Jeremiah 10, 23. Write this out and memorize it. Jeremiah 10, 23. I know, O Lord, that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. <laughs> well, that was me for 23 years. Directing my own steps, I made a mess of it. And it's at the end of that time I realized, oh, I can't do this anymore. I make a mess. Lord, you take over. And so, at that point, somewhere in April, two, uh, in the year 19... Blah, 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 74 <coughs> Christchurch, New Zealand the Lord Jesus took over my life he was boss from then on Lord and Savior, not just Savior he was the Lord and uh, from that point, point on I endeavored to allow the Lord Jesus to call the shots and so I read the Bible to study it to understand what he wants me to do but the first thing was totally submit to him and uh Sure, approach him for forgiveness of my sin. Understand that I should be hanging on the cross. I understood that when I woke up with this thumping headache the other Saturday, that was nothing compared to what I deserved. <laughs> and all the stuff I did deserve, Jesus Christ bore that on the cross for me. So if I get into heaven, it's not because I did anything. It's because he did everything. And I get into kev heaven on his coattails. I can approach God in prayer because when I do, God doesn't see my abominable sins. God sees the perfect righteousness of His Son, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus took my sin. This is the amazing tra transaction that takes place. You come to the Lord Jesus. He takes our sins upon Him and He gives in exchange. He gives us His righteousness to wear as a garment. We have no righteousness of our own. But we wear this righteousness as a garment, so when we approach God, God sees this perfect righteousness of His Son, Jesus, and we are acceptable in God's sight. In God's sight. Yahoo! <laughs> what more could you ask? And so it's on that basis that we uh, approach Jesus. We want that exchange to take place. Take my sin, please. I mean, He's already borne the pain and the suffering and the separation from God. He's born all that stuff, stuff that we will never have to bear. and uh, But we do it on the understanding that He now takes our lives. <clears throat> That's the exchange. He takes our sin. He gets our life. So we live for Him from now on. And He covers us with the robes of His righteousness so we can approach God with boldness to find help in time of need to make our requests before God and to give us the wisdom that we need to understand the Bible, give us the guts we need to actually do what He requires of us on day to day on this earth, because it's not always that easy. You don't get a whole lot of encouragement to live as Christians on this earth. Parents don't get a whole lot of encouragement to be Christian parents, to home educate. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of wisdom and a lot of hard work. And you just don't get a whole lot of encouragement from a lot of people and to do that so we need this ability, this, this uh, facility to approach God with boldness and with confidence knowing that He will give us the help we need at the time to follow through. And we're all going to be faced with a death sentence one day in that car accident, that train accident, you step out in front of the bus or if you wake up one day and you get, like me, told by the, a neurosurgeon that you've got glioblastoma multiforma it's the worst kind there's no cure but you better have that all sorted out let me tell you because you're not ready to live another day until you do 
And if I had not been fully grounded in Jesus Christ when those doctors told me that, I would have gone into a tailspin, crashed and burned. I would have been an absolute mess because they had nothing for me. No words of hope. They, had, they gave me everything they could. They offered me everything they had to offer. And it didn't look too good on balance. Not too good at all. But Jesus Christ offers everything. Eternal life in the future, especially when we deserve nothing but hell. I mean, if I got, if God was fair and I got what I deserved, the earth would crack open just like that. This bed and, and me would fall straight into the burning fires of hell. I'd go there alive and roast forever. If God was fair and just, that's what I would get. Or maybe a lightning bolt out of the sky. Those would be both perfectly fair and just. But no, God is not perfectly fair and just. He loves me. And so he has taken my sins and placed them on his son, Jesus. And he's taken his son's righteousness and put it on me. So I have this 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 relationship with the, with God in heaven, the creator of the whole universe. Who is more powerful than that? Nobody. <laughs> and I can have direct access to him in prayer any time I like because his son has made that connection there. This is what we need, folks. We need to have this sorted out straight away. So please don't delay any longer. Do business with God. You know what you need to do. Down your knees. Tell God that you're a lousy, rotten sinner. That he's been incredibly patient. He has been very long-suffering toward you, as he has. And that you uh, appreciate that very much. You'd like to add, uh, tell him that you're sorry for your sins. Uh, but you also understand that he understands what a, you know, what a mess you are. Hey, he knows our frame, the Bible tells us, Psalm 103. He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. What, what more can you expect from a pile of dust? Uh, not much, you know. So uh, he doesn't expect a whole lot. And yet, once we submit ourselves to Christ, the power of God's Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us. Well, suddenly, God is going to expect a whole lot more, let me tell you. Because he gives us the power, he gives us the faith to believe in him, and the power of the Holy Spirit to actually do what he requires of us. It's all written in the Bible. His his uh, his commandments are not burdensome. They're they're pretty they're pretty good actually. We have discovered that if you follow God's commandments for your life, guess what? Guess who gets blessed? You do, because <laughs> you do what He says. Suddenly, you have a more orderly, more peaceful more purposeful life and it's just far more secure and you have this confidence I know what I've just done was right that's pretty good you can't get that just doing your own thing you might finish doing your own thing and think oh that was clever I got one up on those guys well yeah that might be cute but that's not helping you get to heaven it doesn't it doesn't help you do what's right So no, do your business with God and be reconciled to Him and make sure that you're submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord. He must be your Lord. That is, He calls the shots in your life. That's the only way He can be your Savior, Savior from hell and Savior from the power of sin in this life. 